episode, we are going to be making a T-Rex game. Follow along with me and see how you can do this at home yourself. The first step in the T-Rex game is to make the T-Rex move forward. The code already gives you the when clicked start block. It's saying that when you click this green button in the right hand corner, then your game will start. The first thing we want to do is move Dino forward. So you want to click the blue block and drag it into the yellow block. They also give you the option to put some background music in your game. If you click that block and drag it into the yellow block, background music will also play during your game. If you use the drop down, you can pick what music you want in the background. I'm going to go with Mario. Then to see if your code works, go to the bottom right and click the green play button. Yay, mine worked. Now you want to press continue to step two. The next step is to make your dinosaur move forward forever using a loop. Loops are a great way to minimize your code and use a more efficient way to do an action that's going to be repeated. In this case, the dinosaur moving forward. This is what this orange block is. It is called a loop. And this one moves forever. We are going to take the forever loop and put it in our yellow block underneath the play theme in background. Once you have your forever loop, you want to put move dino forward inside of the loop. Anything inside of that loop is going to repeat forever. Then, to see if it works, press the green play button. If you want to adjust your volume, you can always use this cursor too. Press play, let's see what happens. Now your dinosaur should be moving forward. If you want to keep watching him move, you can press keep playing. Otherwise, let's continue to step three. The next step in our game is to make the keyboard a part of how we control our dinosaur. The next thing you want to do is make it so that the space bar makes the dinosaur jump. You will see there's a new block in your code called when space key pressed and it's yellow. These yellow blocks are all called event blocks. Event blocks in code will always start when something specific happens. In this case, the specific thing is when the space bar is pressed. So, let's start by putting our dino jump code block into the yellow space key pressed. This will make our dinosaur jump when the space key is pressed. We also can add music or the jump sound right above it so that when the dinosaur jumps, it will make a sound effect. Let's try it out. Awesome, our code works. You can press keep playing to mess with that step or you can continue to step four. Step four in our dinosaur game is to add obstacles. This purple block called set obstacle two represents a list. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put cactus one and cactus two inside of this list. Each cactus itself is an object. If you drag the blue block into the circle, it should go inside of the purple block. Let's put both of our cactuses in the purple block. Now, we have a list, and in the list, we have two objects, cactus one and cactus two. Now, we have another event block that says when game is running. This is almost like the forever loop because this block is going to be repeating until the game is turned off. What we want to do is take this blue block that says randomly create obstacles and this will go, okay, randomly create obstacles. So by obstacles, it knows to look at this list that has obstacles in it and it will randomly choose one of these two every seven meters to put in front of our dinosaur. You can also change this number and the smaller you go, the harder the game is going to be because there will be less space in between each object for the dinosaur to jump. So, let's see if this randomly generates cactuses in our game. So, here are the cactuses that are in our game. You can see that there's two different types. Four meters might be a little too close. Let's keep playing to show you some more things. I'm going to reset and I'm gonna change this to six. Another thing you can do is if you have two of the same objects in the list, 
you will only see these cactuses in your game. Even though it's randomly choosing, it's randomly choosing the same thing. So when we press play, you will see that every cactus is the same. So to create more variety in your game, you want Cactus 1 and Cactus 2, and then you can customize how far apart they are. Then, you can practice jumping over the cactuses. Now, let's go to the next step. The fifth step in our dino game is to create more elements to the game that will end the game and help us collect coins. You can see that along with our old blocks, we have two new ones. These are both event blocks, as I talked about earlier, but there are options inside of them. This one says when dino collides with coins, and this one says when dino collides with obstacle. So, we are going to create elements to our game that will happen when these specific things happen. So, when we want the dinosaur to collide with an obstacle, we know that the game is over. If you look on the left, we have a game over block and we have a play music game over block. First, let's drag this red game over block into the yellow one. Now, when it collides with an obstacle, it will tell you that the game's over. We can also add the game over music into the yellow block. When the dino collides with a coin, we want it to play the coin collecting music, like so. So we drag the block into the yellow one. Now that these are here, certain things are going to happen when these happen. So let's play our game and see if these work. So I'm going to jump, and let me turn my sound up a little bit. Now we have the coin sound when we collect coins. Let's, let's see, see what, what happens, happens when we hit a cactus. cactus. Now, now we, we get, get the game, game over message and game over music. music. Let's, Let's continue, continue to step, step six. The sixth step of our code is to add a score function. This way, when your dinosaur collects a coin, it will get scores. So, what we will be doing is creating a variable, and this variable will be called score. So if you go to the left, you will see a create variable button. If you click on this, you can type in a name for your variable. So let's do score and create variable. You can see now that it gave you three new blocks. One that says set score to, change score by one, and a simple score block. We're gonna use these to create a score counter in the top of our code. So the first thing we wanna do in the very beginning when you click play, you want the score to be zero. So we're gonna take set score two and drag it above the forever loop. Now, we need to put in the number zero. So, if you look on the left, there's a little zero block. You want to drag this in here. Now, when the game starts, your score will be set to zero. Then, we want to find our when dino collides with coin, which is here. Along with playing the music, we want our score to go up by one. So you can drag the change score by one block. If you wanted to, you could also change this value, like 10. So now, looking at our blocks, when the game starts, the score will be set to zero. When we collide with a coin, our score will increase by 10. Let's see if this works. Zero, 10. It works. Awesome. It still ends the game when we hit a cactus. So if you want to keep playing, you can keep doing that, or we can continue to step seven. The seventh step in our game is to restart when you lose. So we have yet another event block. This time it says when screen is clicked. That means if you're in the game, if you click on the screen anywhere, whatever is in this block will happen. Over here, we have a new type of block. This sort of block is called an if-else statement. If-else statements go, if this thing happens, this will happen. If something else happens, this will happen. So, in our case, 
all we have is the if part. So, if the game is over, do restart game. So let's drag this in here. So, we have an if statement. If the game is over, restart the game. If the game is not over, since there's nothing else in this block, nothing will happen when you click the screen. So, once the screen is clicked, if the game is over, it will restart the game. Let's see if it works. Game over. It says click to restart, so let's click the screen, and the game restarts. Perfect. Let's continue to step eight. Now, for step eight, we get to change how our game looks. We already completed all of the functionality of the game. So that includes making the dinosaur walk, adding the coins and the obstacles, adding the event blocks when we hit the coins or the obstacles, adding the score counter, and adding the restart function. So now that the game works and has all of the things that we want in the game, we get to change how it looks. Over here we have four different options and we can use all of them. So we have our one play button clicked block here because we want all of these things to change as soon as the game starts. So we have set sky color and you want to put this all underneath the forever loop and you get lots of options. So I'm going to go with orange and then you have a set ground color. So let's do a dark green. And then you have set ocean color. I'm going to do this blue. And then set dino color. So they have options of what your dinosaur can look like. I'm going to do this one. So now that you have colors set, you can experiment and see what it looks like when you press play. So this is my game. I like the colors that I chose. But if you don't, you can change it. Just press the reset button and you can change any of these options that you just made. So let's make it a little bit more monotone. You can kind of try and go for a black and white feel by doing all gray and black. Let's see what this looks like. This one's kind of scary. But now you can see that you were able to customize your game and what it looks like. So the last step of our game is where you can experiment a little bit more openly than what we just did. You can see that all of your blocks now don't have anything inside of them. And what you can do is you can customize your game to be different than how we just built it. So, if you want your game to be the exact same way we just did, you would want to put the blocks in each of these that we have already done. If you don't remember what block goes inside which event block, that's okay. You can go back in the video or you can read the block and try to figure it out. So if we go to this one space key pre pressed block, you want to think back, okay, what were we supposed to make the game do when the space key was pressed? I remember we wanted the dinosaur to jump. And you can also add the music for the jump sound. So that functionality is back in the game. Or when the screen was clicked, that's when we used the if else statement. And we said if the game was over, then we wanted to restart the game. So other ways you could change how the game works is you can add sounds at different times. You can make different things happen like if you wanted to be silly and make the game end when you collided with the coin instead of making it end when you collide with the obstacle, you could do that. Use all the blocks that you have on the left and your event blocks to customize the game however you want. So that's it for this week's Kid 2 Code. I hope you guys enjoyed making the dinosaur game and I would love to see what you guys made. If you have any questions, feel free to email Metaspace and I can answer them either in the email or in the next video. If you want to check the description, I will have the link to the website I used to code and where you can do the same thing I did. I hope you have fun! Bye!